You are standing on the threshold of an adventure in timber harvesting, mechanized logging. This video will help you to work safely in a mechanized timber harvesting operation. We'll discuss the special nature of mechanized logging in terms of the machines used in such operations, safety features and concerns regarding these machines, and what the landings are like in mechanized logging. We'll also cover topics appropriate to any industry operation, including the roles of alertness, training, and communication for safety on the job. If you're just entering this exciting part of the industry, you'll want to consider how similar, and how different, safety practices are in a completely mechanized operation. Even if you've been working in a mechanized operation for some time, you'll find that the material covered in this presentation will make for safer working conditions for you as well. A mechanized operation looks very different from common timber harvesting work sites. On a fully mechanized job, three machines carry out all phases of the work, except loading and hauling. These three machines are the feller buncher, the grapple skidder, and the processor. Each general type of machine, as well as the various makes and models of each type, has its own special features, tasks, and range of timber and terrain it can handle. Through further training, you'll become familiar with the nature, limitations, and safety considerations of the machine you'll operate. Respecting those considerations when working is a must for working safe. The two chief dangers in mechanized logging lie first in pushing machines past their limits by pulling the wrong load or heading over the wrong terrain. The second biggest contributor to unsafe work habits in mechanized logging is when a worker allows the ease of such operations to lower his or her alertness and attention to safety needs. Therefore, using your brain and establishing good work habits early on in your experience with mechanized logging is of paramount importance for maintaining safety on the job. Since you'll be spending your workday in the cab of one of these machines, it shouldn't surprise you to learn that, for the purposes of mechanized logging, the cab of the machine constitutes your safety zone. Be in it to be safe. And be sure you've alerted your co-workers should you need to leave the cab. When entering or leaving the cab, watch your step. Slick plates and steps are your chief hazard at such times. You should also lower all raised equipment and lock out or tag out all function switches to keep the machine in a stable condition whenever it's not operating. Inside the cab, your protection should include a seat belt, glass, screening, and appropriate rollover protection as provided by the equipment manufacturer. Opening up a landing for mechanized logging is similar to preparing any cold deck landing. When clearing an area, you still must consider the hazards of snags, danger trees like widow makers, parts of trees hung up in the branches of their neighbors. At the ground level, dead trees and down timber, as well as living trees and brush, should be cleared. Each can cause direct damage to equipment and its operators. Any tree, living or dead, which can interfere with the safe movement of the machines must be removed as part of taking control of the landing environment. The processor will need a good, level, working area, and the grapple skitter will need to reach it safely with its load. Drop that load and head back down the trail. Room to work is a key consideration of laying out a landing site, and room to work tree lengths free of standing timber is a must as you plan the landing. Therefore, the landing should be longer than the longest tree length to be harvested. Room to work also means laying out equipment, including personal vehicles, in such a way as to avoid creating bottlenecks. You'll have to think about the specifications, size, and number of pieces of equipment that will use the landing. Remember, all the work going on at the landing is important and deserves the space necessary for safe operation. Far afield from the landing, the feller buncher will be busy carrying out the actual harvesting of timber. The business end of a feller buncher is a cutting head and grapple which will fell and bunch trees to a spot from which they'll be skidded. Remember, individual machines are designed to handle a specific range of timber sizes and types, and each also has restrictions on the type of terrain over which it can safely maneuver. 
These machines also have guards, which should be kept in place. As you operate the feller buncher, remember that the cab will limit your field of vision on three sides. Radio communication will go a long way towards compensating for this lack of peripheral view, but routine visual sweeps of the area for other machines or personnel on the ground should be part of your everyday work habits. Your further training will give you the details on the safe operation of the machine. Your safety depends on this knowledge. As a feller buncher operator, you'll also need to become familiar with the specifications of the grapple skitter for which you'll be felling and bunching. Know the terrain needs for safe operation of the skitter and place the harvested trees so that the machine can reach them safely. The skitter has all of the equipment built into it to hook, grapple, and move logs to the landing where it will pile them up for processing. As with the feller buncher, the cab of the skidding machine is your safety zone. Be in it and belt up during the work day. The grapple skidder operator will need to learn and respect the load and operational restrictions of his or her machine. Remember to keep guards in place and lower raised equipment when done working. As you work, start at the bottom of the hill and work up, taking as you go. Use prepared turnarounds and be extra cautious when turning. Always watch out for and communicate with the feller buncher and the processor when operating in their areas. Keep an eye out for unprotected personnel on the ground and be careful not to create a bottleneck when unloading at the landing. Bottlenecks decrease production and are dangerous for you and the processor. The processor replaces the landing bunkers at the landing site. Most processors have no rollover protection, so move cautiously as you go from deck to deck. Finally, don't overload your boom. Match the load to the specifications of your machine. While all landing operations will center around the processor or harvester, you should also remember that there will be other equipment present at the landing site. Trucks will need to come in and be loaded. When setting up a loader, keep in mind that all accessible areas within the swing radius of the rear or sides of the rotating parts of a yarder or loader must be barricaded in such a manner as to prevent an employee from being struck or crushed by that yarder or loader. Along with trucks and a loader, there may also be debarkers and chippers in operation at the landing. All of these machines represent hazards to people on the ground so stay in the cab of your rig here, too. There is one other type of mechanized logging operation which must be mentioned, the cut-to-length forwarder operation. This tandem mechanized operation is sort of a roadside fruit and vegetable stand for timber. A cut-to-length feller processor machine harvests and processes trees, leaving them by the trail for the forwarder. The forwarder follows the trail and picks up the cut lengths. The forwarder may take the cut lengths to a deck or, optimally, it will have the capability of loading the lengths directly onto a truck for hauling. This presentation has covered the basic knowledge needed to participate safely in a mechanized logging operation. We've seen the types of machines used in such operations and learned a bit of each of their general functions. Remember to learn and respect the design capabilities of the machines you'll be using in the field and respect both the capabilities and limitations of your machine. Always keep your machine's guards in place and shut them down fully by lowering equipment and locking or tagging out all functions. You should also remember to keep a visual watch out for people and machines entering your work area and to use both visual and radio communication to maintain safety on the job. Finally, remember to stay awake and aware when working. Your brain is always your most important piece of safety equipment. <laughs>